This would be so much cuter if I actually ever had candles to light. I mean, I have tiny candles, but those are a pain to pick up out of the little container after they're like done burning. So just cedar will have to suffice until I'm like in the middle of a ritual. But then I don't know if I'd film that. I don't know if that's invasive. Alas. Oh, cedar falling everywhere. Not my favorite, but it's what I have. Hey, it's Marin, and this is the Tarot and Astrology forecast for the week of, and yet again, I am unprepared with the exact dates because not a numbers person. Sunday the 15th through Saturday the 21st of December. So we'll get started first with the tarot cards and a Celtic cross to see what the dynamic for the collective is. Then we will look at the actual astrology for a more tangible view day to day of the week. And we'll round things out with some oracle deck cards for more guidance and insight into how to deal with this. So we'll start out taking the cards and forming, forming a Celtic cross interesting spread just because we have several major arcana cards here and um, that's that's nice nice busy to see so the card representing the situation at hand we have the seven of pentacles which this card is actually called failure or it has to do with things coming into being in a way that you don't really have any control over but that you're not completely satisfied with the compliment card we have to this is the knight of cups inverted which is a pretty clear um indicator of needing to be on alert for untrustworthiness or someone's intentions are not emotionally aligned with what you would hope for in an honest manner. So someone might be untrustworthy. The third card representing the potential for the situation is the hanged man inverted. So this card reverse generally deals with choosing to take a spiritual path over making sure that you are staying grounded and not martyring yourself. The best instance of this signification can be when we're making like a tangible spiritual choice. So that might be to pick up a spiritual practice in response to maybe some hardships coming your way. So the fourth card represents the unconscious reason for the reading and with the emperor reverse, like w it might not be that unconscious that we're looking for guidance because things are in utter chaos, basically. The fifth card representing the past, the recent past, is the High Priestess reversed. So instead of something gestating or waiting to come into being, this is indicating that maybe there was a um, there was a reversal of something supposed to happen that is now not happening. The sixth card represents the future, and the Eight of Wands. This card is actually called Swiftness. So with it reversed, like things are going to kind of drag on. Things are going to take longer than we're hoping for. And there's a lot of reversals in this spread indicating this is definitely a time of looking back. The seventh card is us in the situation and we have the page of cups. The page of cups is bearing emotional witness and basically taking on they're being emotional about whatever is happening to them. So this week we are, um, we're feeling everything. We are feeling the things that we need to feel in order to release them. We're not necessarily moving forward with passions. The eighth card is our influences or environment. And with the King of Wands, we're likely inspired by someone who is taking leadership and empowering us to do the same. Maybe we are, um, we're admiring someone who's been through similar adversity or who is leading us out of this adversity and we're allowing that to empower us. The ninth card represents our hopes and our fears. With the strength card reversed, I think we are scared to completely let go and completely like let ourselves be very vulnerable. And we're also hopeful that if we do come clean and if we do let it all like unleash, that we will find some freedom. So I think this is asking for actually taking that leap into vulnerability, no matter how scary unleashing that is. The tenth card represents the final outcome of the situation. And we have the three of pentacles, which is it's depicting the building of a cathedral, brick by brick, block by block. It's the intelligent, timely strategy of something being built long term. And actually, my ascendant is in this decan of Capricorn. Second decan of Capricorn corresponds to this card. Fun fact. But basically, this is saying that by the end of this week, we're actually putting structures in place for our long term development. So with Tara out of the way, let's now look at the astrology day by day to see how this is playing out over the course of the week. So Sunday the 15th starts out with a really great aspect of the Jupiter-Uranus trine. The Jupiter-Uranus trine is an outer planet, or it's not technically outer planet, it's 
later inner planet Jupiter with an outer planet, which means that it's a collective transit that will happen over the course of the entire year three times, I believe. And the first one starts out uh, this this Sunday the 15th and will go in through 2020. So with a Jupiter Uranus trine, it elevates what we consider practically possible. Jupiter is the great benefic, the expander, the optimist, and Uranus is the liberator, the Promethean force of upgrading and revolutionizing. So we're growing what we consider able to be upgraded or changed or revolutionized. We're embracing the spontaneous upheavals around us. The moon does try Mercury, which harmonizes what we say and what we truly intend behind those words, which brings us into this week on an honest, uplifted note. I think that the beginning of this week, we're all like, like everything is coming out to bear. A lot of the different parts of what's going on in our lives are becoming more honest. And we feel, we feel like, like we've just thrown up, like we're relieved to get everything out on the table, even if we feel kind of drained afterward. So Monday the 16th, the moon in Leo will trine the Sagittarius sun, which is a really beautiful fire, trying an aspect of sending us into that afternoon with a burst of prideful energy to take actionable creative risks. Own your personal power until that night the moon enters Virgo and asks for more practical matters and taking notes. So I think this, the beginning of this week, we are empowered to rise from the ashes and then we're slowly getting a hold on, okay, what does that actually practically mean? How am I inspiring myself to, for the long term? Tuesday the 17th, we are woken up by a grand earth trine between the moon, Jupiter, and Uranus, which is really starting off that Tuesday the 17th on a grounded note of like getting shit done, getting our shit together. That night, the moon Mercury square triggers an analysis of what we should really say or not. So stay rooted in acting from your true truth. I think this um, is represented by the strength card reverse that we don't know whether we need to say something to warrant a reaction from someone or whether we stay in our truth, even if that means not getting the hit of ego gratification and trusting that as we stay more rooted in what we know won't backfire on us, that emotional reactivity is not the answer. Wednesday the 18th, we have a morning moon Mars sextile, which indicates opportunity for fulfilling action. And then the moon Saturn trine grounds us into taking long-term trajectories seriously. So that this week really is like, how do I light that emotional fire for maybe revenge against where I feel victimized, but still make that rooted in truth, not just egoic compensation. The moon trines Pluto to further deepen our laser focus on reaching those priorities. And then the Mars Saturn sextile has us eager to do the small things we have to do to do the bigger things. So by the middle of the week, we are laser focused on going after that goal, rising from the tumultuous ashes of things really being upheavaled or, or being in upheaval or having been lied to or misunderstanding. And now we're really ready to get down to business. Thursday the 19th, the Libra moon will oppose Chiron early on, which faces us directly with our emotional triggers. So starting off on Thursday, there might definitely be some need for some internal subconscious work, even though you could be working on a really mundane project. You have to analyze what are the internal thoughts I have about putting my creative output into the world and why I might feel victimized by others' reception of it before it even happens just because of past patterning. The moon then squares Jupiter later on, which quickly, quickly brings up resolution. So the moon squared to Jupiter, that's an aspect that will indicate things kind of um, jolly full bringing up to the surface and finding enjoyment amongst the emotional patterns going on. Though do avoid reconciliation for the sake of cowardice. Like if this has to do with someone wronging you, don't just make amends for the sake of making amends. Actually feel what you're feeling and find that enjoyment through what's coming up and the release of that. Mercury will score Neptune, which indicates definitely a possibility for deception, whether to yourself or others. So Thursday the 19th, I would not take anything at face value and avoid making promises or looking for promises to be made in the face of such confusing energy. Friday the 20th, the Libra moon sextiles Mercury, which invites in the artistic realm early on for us to put our... Um, artistic aesthetic values down onto practical paper or make those things well versed for others to understand. The moon is then cornered by squares to Saturn and Pluto and Capricorn, which the morning starts out with you appreciating your expansive options and then later on in the day it really highlights fears about time, fears about the crisis that could happen, fears about the outside institutions imposing on you. So this is asking for a rebalancing between the here and the now and then the long term dreams. Saturday the 21st, there's a T-square between the Scorpio moon, Venus in Aquarius, and Uranus in Taurus, which definitely highlights unstable relationship dynamics and a drive to react explosively because of feelings of emotional engagement in a dynamic that feels like 
there's an aloofness or there's a not caring going on about something that you really care about. So do avoid, do avoid reacting explosively for the sake of trying to fill emotional space. Avoid hitting someone where you know they're wounded just to validate your own ability to impact. That's a good thing to remember as the week ends. However, the sun does enter Capricorn to begin a new season of grounded practicality. So things do definitely end with that Three of Pentacles note. This is a week of um, emotional volatility, things coming up to the surface, whether that is your excitement or whether that is some um, need for catharsis with a partner that may end in upheaval. The week does end with, okay, this is my game plan and this is what I'm meant to do moving forward. So with that being said, let's look at the Work Your Light Oracle deck cards for a head body heart spread on what guidance is coming through. So for the head card, we have trust the niggle. What is the niggling feeling trying to tell you? Maybe we have an idea for what excites us and we have to follow that excitement instead of any inertia for what we're doing in the present moment based on what we think other people want us to. For the body card, we have boundaries. Where do you need to establish better boundaries? This reading has boundaries written all over it because no matter how entangled you are with another person's timeline, if that timeline of that person does not serve your highest timeline, it's time for you to cut ties. You can always, I mean, I don't want to act like everyone is expendable because we're all unique in our own way, but technically in your life, everyone is, ex is expendable because you don't need anyone. These boundaries will support you in your highest journey because there will be less energy leaks when you're not around people people that are imposing their will onto you. And finally for the heart card, the crumbling. What are you clinging on to? There might be some nostalgia this week over past circumstances that once served you, but you need to now realize that what was once honest, the same words could be now dishonest, coming at you from your higher consciousness perspective of where you're at now. We've done a lot of growing over this past ending of the decade. We're really ready to step into 5D new earth, and that means letting go of some of the karmic ties and stepping into your power even if you don't know what that looks like yet and just following that excitement. So now let's pull a Law of Attraction card to see what card comes up to guide us in and attracting what we want out of this situation this week. My goal of happiness is important enough. The reason you are not conscious of any specific pre-birth goals is because there were no specific goals. You had before your birth general intentions such as being happy, being an uplifter, having continuing growth, but the specific processes to achieve those things are up to you to decide here and now. In this time, you are the creator. I love this because I think that this is written all over this week with not having to have a clear plan about what the end looks like, but trusting that you know what the end feels like. You know what happiness and upliftment you want to achieve, so why not choose those instead of choosing a struggle or components that you're having to fit together that don't really fit in hopes of achieving that. Choose that here and now. So with that being said, I hope this was helpful. If you did find it helpful, like, subscribe, hit post notes, do all the things. Check out my private astrology consultations down below because I would love to read for you. And otherwise, I will see you in the next video.